is your show. Streaming live in front of the studio audience from the Juno Live Studio at Resurrection Lutheran Church in beautiful downtown Juno, Alaska. This is Into the Arts. This week we'll be introducing one of our hosts, and here is that host, Melissa McCormick. Good afternoon, how are you? I am doing great. So I am not a host on this show. I'm Brad Perkins. I am the producer of Juno Live um, uh, Station. But I agreed to uh, come aboard and, uh, and help you get you through this first show since you're alone. And we're just doing a bit of a cold start on the show sure. uh, to get going this, uh, this week because I wanted to have the show premiere with the other shows. So we'll, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the format of the show and where we see it going. And, uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about your background and in the community, because you do a lot of things in Juno, and, uh, and you're a perfect host for this show, for one of the two hosts of the show. So I'm going to take a minute and describe the vision for this show that we're very excited about and who the sponsors are of this show. So the vision for the Into the Arts show was that there are lots of, um, uh, of different areas of the arts that people can participate in Juno, and you're in some of them, and we'll talk about your background in the, in the arts, but that we that people talk to, we hear at the studio, because lots of people come in here to do different arts in Juno, especially during the pandemic, we've heard people saying, gee, I really wish I could learn to sing or play an instrument or something like that. Um, and then besides the performing arts, there's the whole area of visual arts. Which, um, which I'm terrible at. Um, I can't paint, I can't sculpt, I, I do graphic arts, but I don't do any of those other arts. And, and, um, but we've hear, if we hear from people like Nancy DeCheney at the Juno Arts and Humanities Council that she's been trying to run things to get people into the arts, like finding ways to get people into classes and things like that. And I know, Melissa, you've been doing that too. Um, doing something with you, I want to we'll talk about that, the what you've done to get people into the arts. And so the idea of this of this show, Into the Arts, was helping people find a pathway into the arts. And so the, the format of the show was supposed to be that each week we'll pick an area of the arts, whether it's uh, performing arts like singing, dancing, uh, acting, um, or an instrument or something like that, um, or it's a, a visual art, like, for example, um, uh, you know, painting, sculpting, uh, writing um, poetry or writing a stage player is something like that that people are interested in doing. And we'll bring a guest in that is either an instructor or a performer or somebody, whatever, and then we'll, um, they'll talk about how they do that. And then we'll um, do a demonstration of that if possible on, the, on our second stage over here to demonstrate how they do that or how they teach that. Um, and, uh, and then as part of the show, will include information about how you can sign up for classes or where you can get an instrument um, or where you can get supplies, painting supplies or sculpting supplies in Juno so that you can get, help get people into that art um, if they want to do that. And so that, and they'll be on the website for the show will be the links to get all that, phone numbers and then the, the uh, people on the show um, will be free to hawk their wares or hawk their services and say, I, I teach, so call me or you know, email me or whatever else. So. Uh, that was the idea of the show. Our two sponsors for the show is uh, Alaska Music One Store, Keith Giles, who also is a, a sponsor of the Alaska Music One Presents series, um, and, uh, and actually is a big supporter of the Juno Live Studio. He helps put equipment in here and does a lot of work with us on that. And the other is um, the Juno Arts and Humanities Council, Nancy Dershaney, because she sees, um, I think, sees the value of helping people get in the arts also. So the show's not about what's performing in town, although that's absolutely fan uh, fascinating, and we help out where we can, uh, hosting performances in here when they can't be held, hosted elsewhere. But it's really about getting people into the arts in here. So that's kind of the format of this show. And we're very excited about Melissa joining us. We're looking for, uh, and we believe we have another, um, another performing artist who we hope is going to join us uh, as a performing artist. But we're hoping to have a co-host in the performing arts that will help do that for this. So it's, we're, we're um, going to try to get that done in the next week. The show airs. Um, every two weeks, along with all the other regular Juno live shows that'll be that'll be filming on Saturdays, um, and um, and so the next show will be in two weeks, and we hope to have a guest by then or some pick some area of the art by then. 
But this week, the show came about very rapidly. Melissa, I think, signed up to do this like three days ago, kind of <laughs> out of nowhere. And I said, and I said, you don't have to start this week with all the other shows, but heck, if you want to, I'll come on the show with you and we'll just talk about it. So thank you for doing this yeah, you know, on no, no, no notice. So before we get into your art, I want to talk about all the other things you do in town, because when I started talking to Melissa, and thanks to Keith for finding Melissa, um, I started realizing the connection that we had uh, with, with Melissa because um, uh, Karen Perkins, the pastor here, who's also my wife, uh, we started saying, and she said, well, I do the signs, and let's pan over to the sign over here because I think this is a thing that everyone in town um, knows because these are out in front of the church um, and whatever. Do you want to tell us about that thing you do? Sure. So the signs came, uh, came to being. Um, just because we wanted to have some positive messaging in Juno, uh, we have a small nonprofit behind it called Find Your Fire, uh, which helps young adults in, um, in crisis, but also just helping them kind of find their skills, what they're passionate about, and how we can get them to a, a really healthy point in their lives as they transition into adulthood. Um, so we have different signs that say things like, you matter, you are worthy of love, um, I mean, we even have them now being printed in different languages in Spanish, wow. and actually right now we're working on two that are being um, translated into Clinket. So I'm very excited to have those. We're going to have some form line design behind the, just the black and white, but um, right now most of them are all just black and white. They're very easy to see. They're usually very simple, um, very simple designs and very simple uh, wording, but just as a reminder that, uh, that you are matter, that you matter, don't give up, those kinds of things. So. Um, needed right now with COVID, of course. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fantastic. And I see them all over signs, including my, my neighbor next door has them out in front of their house. And then also, you're the executive director of Healing Hands, and, yes. which is an, another great organization. You want to tell us a little bit about that organization? Sure. The Healing Hand Foundation um, helps Alaska Native and beneficiaries, as well as U.S. veterans, um, kind of help with their medical durable goods if they need assistance with anything from oral health to behavioral health uh, to needing an oxygen tank or braces or glasses, those kinds of things. Um, we're actually hosting an event on November 6th that we're gonna be um, honoring Ethel Lund, who is um, an elder that has done a lot for Alaska Native Healthcare in Juneau and throughout Southeast Alaska, so. Wow, so not enough on your platter that we actually right. do this also. <laughs> so, and, um, and then tell us about your, you, what you do in the visual arts and uh, why your ideal, well, I mean, I know your ideal for the show, but just what do you do in the visual arts area? Sure. So visual arts, um, I've had a long history in visual arts. I used to just teach my kids. It was kind of the beginning. Um, I started teaching at Glacier Valley Elementary School as an artist in the school there. Uh, when that program kind of phased out, uh, we went to just teaching homeschool art classes to children. And I did that for probably, it's been, it was about eight years, I believe. Um, some of those young artists are now young men and women who um, just graduated from high school last year, so it's, it's interesting to see them grow. And actually, one of my students teaches her own, um, her own paint classes now for young students, um, usually over the holidays and usually to help her get through her dance classes. It's called the Arts for Youth. Wow. And so I'm very excited. Mackenzie Morford does that, and I'm very proud of her, and just being proud that I was able to give that gift to continue on to the next generation. So um, started out with that. Then uh, we started doing paint and sip classes at the Silver Bow Inn before it was remodeled, um, and then uh, kind of branched from there. We've done them, you know, we do baby showers, we've done wedding showers, all, all kinds of things, and even a few weeks ago we taught a group of the JDHS cheerleaders. We did a team building activity with all of them. So very exciting stuff. I love working with young, young people. Um, we've done some virtual classes as well. Uh, over the holidays last year, we did a mental health class with a grant from the Juno Arts and Humanities Council. Um, we, painted, <clears throat> we painted emotions, we painted grief, we painted love, we painted, it was just a really interesting class just to see all the different uh, mediums that people had used and you know how they express themselves. And then we do some fun, like, like uh, you'll see in a moment, some of the snowman classes and things that we do over the holidays. Um, we've done some virtual classes with those too. It's, and it's a little battle with my Zoom. I'm not a super tech person, but um, I'm glad that this opportunity is here so that we can 
um, of course, be able to build on that a little bit and not just be looking at a tiny screen while I'm painting. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. So why don't we uh, take this opportunity to have you come over here and let's uh, go over to our demonstration area. And sure. You can talk about uh, some of the things you brought to show us today. I think this is uh, some beautiful work over here. I love the ornament motif on the, uh, this artwork. Thanks. So these, um, the ornaments were actually done for a project that we did this last Christmas. Um, we decorated a campsite and it was a fundraiser for another youth organization in town. I believe it was football, um, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, no, it was actually it was softball. So anyway, but uh, we designed a whole You Matter campsite with our signs oh. and with some virtual you know, wooden ornaments and things throughout the entire campsite, decorated it, and we actually won. So we, oh. we got a small, um, a small grant, I guess, from that. So that was great. We split it with the, the students. Um, so that's where the wood ornaments came from, but um, we have taught classes with these as well. You can paint on just about anything. Um, I typically use canvas, but sometimes when I see a fun, a fun um, shape or something, I thought, oh, we could do this with it or, or whatever. So, so that's where these came from. We did a lot of Northern Lights classes, um, and most of these images that I'm showing here today are very simple designs, and these are the kinds of classes that that I will be um, sharing here with this group is just kind of you know beginning painting. I'm not going to do anything that's very difficult, but sometimes just getting people to put paint onto a canvas is is really exciting. So um, and sometimes it does take a glass of wine um, or a few friends together to. Oh my God, wine! <laughs> oh well, there's ever wine in church. So so, so are these uh, are these acrylic paints or what do you like working? In? I like working with acrylics. Uh, watercolor, I have done watercolor, but I get they get a little messy and they they kind of do things that I don't like them to do sometimes. Okay. Where acrylic, I can control a little bit more. Uh, my grandmother was an artist, she was an oil painter, and oh. she did a lot of landscapes. Um, I tend to, not when I'm just doing you know, characters and things, but I tend to do a lot of um, people and facial expressions. Um, and then in the holiday season, I also paint windows all over town. So if you've ever been oh, to Bartlett wow. Regional Hospital and you've seen the window murals, um, we usually have a theme each year. Um, usually for the ER area, we try to choose something that is a little uh, more childlike you know, the hottest new, you know, Disney movie or whatever that happens to be. So. Very, very cool. Yep. So in any paint by numbers? No, I'm just kidding. No, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I encourage people to not paint by number. And I also encourage people, especially when I'm teaching youth, to paint by shape. So when you're looking at something and you think, oh my gosh, that's so overwhelming, I can't do that. I think, I tell them, you know, think of a shape. What color is, for example, what color is, or what shape is the minion? You know, he's kind of like an oval shape. So. Most people know their basic shapes, and then we kind of build on it from there. I usually paint light to dark, and then add the details of the light again at the very end. So a lot of people, um, especially kids, they don't always get what the background is. They want to go right to, let's paint the minion right in the center of the uh -huh. <laughs> thing. So I have to tell them, you know, let's focus on the background first, because that's going to be what's behind your image. Okay. So anyway, there's, there's a lot to still learn. And I'm still learning as an artist. You're always learning. Your, your art pieces are never completely done, I don't okay. think so. Very exciting. Yeah. OK. Well, that's great. And then any thoughts about maybe doing um, sculpture or any of the other areas of visual sure. art? Sure. Um, I have not gotten into a whole lot of sculpture, but I have some colleagues that, that do. So I great. would love to be able to share this opportunity with other visual artists as well, um, so that it's not just me sitting here talking in front of a camera. But I have some other people that would be definitely be interested in participating as well. Okay. So. Well, great. I, I did definitely we've seen a lot of people have interest when we've been we've been pitching the show. We have we do have a co-producer, who is a um, uh, was a school teacher and a, um, a choir teacher from Temecula, California, who um, will be up here in November to help produce. And uh, she's been working on the show for three months now. And so oh, we're looking forward to having her up here to work on the show. And her name is April Dooley. And so we're looking forward to having her join us. And so uh, we're excited about, we're very excited about this program. And I know so is the Junior um, Arts and Humanities Foundation as well as uh, Keith Giles. So, um, sure. so thank you for yeah. joining us today for this kind of short introduction of yeah. the show. And uh, again, uh, join us again in two weeks. Uh, the show airs 
at uh, 4 o'clock on, uh, on Saturdays, um, generally every other week, but you can check on the website junolive.org. And uh, all the past shows will be always available on that site. And uh, we will see you in two weeks for our next show. So thank okay. you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show.